Good afternoon, everyone. I am back with another uh, unboxing and storage solution video, this time for Nemo's War. Um, this is actually the second edition of Nemo's War. This one is uh, produced by Victory Point Games. This game is not quite as mainstream as some of the other games I may have covered, um, but is hitting retail. Um, right about now um, or is already in retail but this is a fantastic game for uh, a pure solo experience uh, if we take a quick look at the back here you can see that uh, it features solo gameplay with a two to four player co-op variant included normally it's the solo mode that's included or the solo variant that's included this is actually pretty much a solo game um, you are Captain Nemo and you're you're piloting the the one Nautilus around um, there are ways to incorporate other players but essentially it is really just meant for one player you can see here it plays in about 90 minutes uh, 14 plus uh, it is very thematic if you enjoy the book uh, so if you're a fan of 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, this is um, really going to immerse you kind of in that whole process. So let's go ahead and take a look here at Nemo's War, second edition. So here we have the rule book. Um, it is decently thick here, looking at about 30 pages. But there are uh, some decent visuals. Actually, a lot of wasted space over here on the edges. It's interesting, but. Um, so there you go, that's the rule book. And then this is the epilogues book. Um, from what I understand, this, and I'm not gonna really stay on here too much. This gives you the outcomes depending on what kind of uh, victory condition you were aiming for and then how many points you got. This is going to give you kind of a, just a little scenario um, end game write up um, that you can read through. So it, it makes replayability um, really big because there's many different ways you can play through the game and many different endings you can accomplish. So. Uh, here we have a whole bunch of uh, cardboard, oh not that many, okay. So there's the board, let's take a look at the board first. So you know what, I am just going to open this up so you can see it and then I'm going to zoom back out in a minute but this board is big. So let's bring the box back here and just cover over some of the um, tokens in the game. A lot of what the game covers is combat with ships. And so you can see all the various ships here. There's not any that are, um, you know, there's no repeats. And these are all based upon uh, real historical ships. And I'm pretty sure that the different colors uh, represent various levels of difficulty in the ships. So the white ones I'm sure are pretty easy. And then as you can see, we're getting into the reds and, and we're looking at battleships here, capital ships. Um, so lots of ships to focus on. These look like victory points. And now here is where one of the uh, wind condition scenarios is so if you want to go for a science victory or an explorer victory um, you would essentially uh, Lay this down on the board and I'll show you that in a second, but this is going to give you different point setups Based upon what victory condition you're going after so there's anti-imperialism and war as well So we'll look at that in just a second here um, These appear to be all of the cards. Here is the little Nautilus, your one little miniature that comes in the game. Let's hold it for that. Uh, some standard six sided dice, some resource cubes, and some flat, flat cubes there, and some crystals. 
pretty straightforward. Some additional baggies, I'm assuming for all the tokens, but we're gonna try and not use those. A uh, little catalog for victory point games. And another tiny little token. Sheet. So, uh, I'm hoping in my storage solution here to make use of this insert so we can protect the miniature, um, keep the cards organized, uh, but utilize this space right here. So my objective is gonna be find kind of a square thing that will hold all those ship tokens. Um, take a look at the cards real quick here. Uh, so you can see there's three varying colors. These orange ones appear to be upgrades that you can make to the Nautilus. Strength and Prow, Hydro Drive, Double Hull. Um, and then you've got, these are the ones on the back that say Co-op Roll. So it looks like if you are playing with additional people, you're giving them actual uh, roles to play. Whereas in the, the solo role, you're playing them all. So um, you'll have to, We'll have to see if we can find someone who's played the co-op version. And then these appear to be just a whole bunch of events. Um, you can see they're all numbered. A lot of them have a test scenario. Some of them have this keep option on it. Uh, like this one says, when the Nautilus is in the Indian Ocean, you may pass, I'm assuming, to gain one Nemo. Um, I guess that's heal, heal your Nemo, heal yourself. Uh, game ends, it's a fail if unused. So, and you can also see up here in the corner, there's various um, you know, victory points for the symbols. And that's what here I'm gonna cover. I'm not gonna go over too many of these because these are kinda, I don't wanna spoil anything. But you can see there are various resources. And if we pull the board over here, zoom in a little bit. You can see that your motives track there um, gives you, here are the various um, breakdowns, but I believe that's also where you can say, punch out this little token here. And if you wanna do an explore, you can cover all these up. So you can see here, we saw a bunch of these already. These are getting you plus zero each, so they're neutral. You're actually getting minus one for a sinking warship, so anything that's a red victory point, it's actually going to lose you a point. Um, uh, but your liberation and your science discovered and your wonder scene, so explore actions or explore victory conditions, obviously wonder scene is going to be times seven, so you're really going to be going after those, which is going to influence your gameplay drastically. Um, so if we just zoom out here, you can see that my table here is the inner dimensions are about you know, 36 by 36. And this board just about stretches that full 36 inches wide. I don't know if I, if I can even get up here high enough to get the whole thing into one shot without taking the camera off. So there you can see it, the whole thing in all its grandeur. It's quite a large board, um, covers a lot of material. So this is definitely a thinking man's game. But again, the hope here is to get um, all of these tokens here into organized in here without having to use all these baggies. So let's see what we can do here. All right, we did it. Um, <clears throat> what you see here is everything in the box except for the board, which I left out here. I'll show you guys, you know, obviously that fits in. There's plenty of space along the top here. One thing I do wanna cover real quick, I say this all the time, but um, games like this that have cards just sitting loose in a compartment like that especially it's always nice to take the empty cardboard 
pieces um, that all your chits and stuff came out of, all your tokens came out of, and put those in the bottom. That is going to help the um, everything fit more flush and so your, your cards and stuff aren't going to bounce around in here, especially if you tip it on the side. So I just went ahead and did that because there's really nothing that would replace that space that was taken up when it was just sitting on the shelf. So. Um, you can see here, well, I guess we'll start with this. Um, this little guy I actually picked up from the Dollar Tree here down the street from me, but I saw it also on eBay and on Amazon. Dollar Tree obviously was the cheapest place, so if you have one nearby, um, check them out first. Here is one. This is what it looked like on the store shelf. Crafter's Square Craft Storage Box. Uh, the reason I went with this simply is because of its dimensions. It fits inside this square here, which is kind of a seven by six. Uh, I tried finding a six by six, I tried finding a seven by seven. I couldn't find anything in those dimensions that had the actual storage compartments. So this one is about um, six by five. So you can see there's a little bit of room around the edge. This will bounce around a little bit, but I don't think it'll be too bad. Otherwise it pretty much holds just about everything I wanted to. Not everything. Um, you can see here that I've got ship tokens, lots of ship tokens here. Um, I doubled up some of the colors just because there's a few of them, didn't make sense. Um, here are the jewels, here are the unidentified ship tokens. These are, uh, to keep track of your score during the game, you don't need to even use these, and you only need like one or two at a time, so definitely don't want to just dump them out and have to pull them back in. Um, these are like the trackers that you use um, throughout the game. So these are all just kind of the random resources that all found a home together in this whoops, Arabian tunnel. Even just barely fits in there. Uh, you can see here's all the white starting ships and at the beginning of the game, you just pull these out and drop them in a cup or a bag or something. Um, but most of the cardboard fit into this little guy right here. Um, you know, snaps nice and closed. Really great deal for a dollar. Um, a few things that I could not get to fit in, um, some of which I put in this baggie. These are just the, the crew um, tokens. These just were too long. Um, and then the Nemo's Motives, which are, you know, nice thick cardboard squares here. Um, I may or may not leave them in the bag. The reason I left them in the bag, though, was so that they stayed right on top of my cards here. Um, there's this other cardboard piece. I haven't figured out what this is for, but all of my cards are under here now. And with this stuff on top, essentially when I put the board and the rule book there this will keep the cards from coming up and sliding around so just i filled in that well basically then over here i have my bag of dice i have my bag of cubes that are used in the uh, unplaced uprising cubes and then um this is the only cardboard i didn't get into my little insert and these are all your treasures um, you draw these out of a cup as well. So essentially you're always just gonna be dumping them into a bag. If I can find a little bag that will still allow me to fit it in here, then I'll probably switch this out for a bag because these will always just go back into a bag. You draw them blindly out um, and then you leave them out in front of you during the game, but then they can go right in the bag. So for now I'm just using the bag that was included in the game, but I hope to find a more thematic bag that is not clear um, so when I reach in, I can't see what I'm pulling out. And then the Nautilus token, obviously. But uh, that's it. I mean, this all cleaned up nicely. Um, you know, my only regret is that this doesn't fit quite as snug. But honestly, I don't think even if I got another quarter of an inch all the way around, I would have been able to get, you know, this other stuff in there. Um, and so just for reference... <laughs> Just so you can see, the board will go in right there. And since I put those inserts in underneath, there's basically 
just enough room to slide in my rule books and then it's almost entirely flush with the top lid goes on and there you go so that is my nemo's war storage solution again that literally cost me one dollar um i think the priciest i've seen it was like eight or nine dollars on amazon it's like three dollars on ebay so if you have a dollar tree one dollar storage solution for nemo's war if you uh, enjoyed this video or it helps you out, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you enjoy DIY storage solutions and unboxing videos for board games, please consider subscribing to the channel. Uh, thanks again for watching. Have a great day.